Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Lost in Transit. Hello. If you're new around here, I'm Iz, this is Tom, and we're in our van, the Bamba. For the last few days, we haven't been able to stay in the van, and that is because the van's been in for its MOT. We realised that the van hadn't been cleaned since Sligo in Ireland. Uh, I've been waiting to see this for so long. The van is disgusting. It's been disgusting since Ireland. Um, and I love a satisfying van clean. Let's go. MOT wasn't actually due until July, but we put in early because we are heading off to Europe in a matter of weeks and we want to stay out for a decent whack of time. It did fail. Uh, it needed three new tyres, which was most of the cost of the MOT. It was about £600 in total. And then we had a few other things which were fairly minor, which to be honest, I'm really pleased about because the van is from 2007 um, and it's still chugging on. We've never really had any issues. While we were away, we were contacted by a company called Goose Hill and they make paddle boards and they have sent us out a paddle board and it's customised and I cannot wait to open we're it. We're just on our way now to the train station to go and pick up Tom's sister who's coming along with us today. So let us know in the comments what you think of our new camera setup. We've actually got a new upgrade with a better mic and a better camera. So I don't know if you can notice the quality, we're just getting used to talking to a bigger camera, also just making sure it's not shaky. Uh, I think it's, I, I, I noticed the back quality and the sound quality. We're using the Canon M50 and we've had it since the first ever vlog, but I have a very embarrassing confession to make. Basically, I turned the image stabilization off on the camera and we've had shaky footage ever since. So we've never used the Canon M50, but only recently, last week, I discovered <laughs> that I could turn the image stabilization on so we are back on the M50, which uh, we could have been using this whole time. We're just waiting at the station now for Tom's sister Gabs and her dog Gladstone. He's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting for the train. Oh. Barbados as we like to call it and <laughs> this is the beach that allows doggies it's not the nicest beach in Cornwall but it's a good one for dogs it's um, not my favourite no Gabs is a big like fan you're allowed to say that, that to be honest that. yeah but we thought it's a good spot for the paddleboard and Gladstone just got a couple hours on the uh, the parking and the moment we've been waiting for we've had this paddleboard for about a month now maybe three weeks just means that there, we've been waiting to open it and waiting for a good opportunity to go paddleboarding. The day has come, the sun is out. Woohoo! Mm. Like, I kind of want to. Got the paddle. We've got the bag for it all to go in. Whoa! It's actually smaller than the box, and that's good. So, in the box as well, we've got a pump, a fin, and we've got a repair kit. Woohoo! But this paddleboard isn't a normal paddleboard. The guys at Goose Hill have customised it for us using our designs. It's They're so big. <laughs> That's so cool. It's so cool. Oh my god. It's so cool. Uh, but it all fits into a little backpack, so you can take it down to the beach and, and we'll pump it up there. The beach is really quiet, it's a lovely long beach where you can let the dogs off and run around. And then down the other end, there's actually quite like an industrial 
landscape and that is actually some of the remnants from the china clay industry Let's go back now. I think this is going to get a lot of use. It's actually turned into a really nice day uh, down at Par Beach. Like it was a bit grey when we arrived, but the sky's coming out, like the sun's coming out, it's turning blue. Um, yeah, lovely, and it's so good to get out on the board. It's so much fun. What a good addition to the van. Thank you so much, Iris from Goose Hill, for sorting us out. And if you guys want your own paddle board, we'll leave a little link in the. Um, description of the video and it'll be like an affiliate link so if you buy one from there we'll get a little commission which is nice for us um, you can also get it direct from Goose Hill's website as well and that's if you want to get personalized I'd probably do it that way so Par Beach is actually a lovely beach but I guess we have a bad rap and that's partly because of the remnants from the clay industry there's an area around here called the clay country. This area has really been affected by the clay industry. In fact, the China clay here is the second most valuable mineral export for the UK after North Sea oil and gas. We only paid for two hours on the car and we're all getting pretty hungry. So we're heading back. We're gonna go off to Charlestown. It's a nice little harbourside town just down the coast from here. We've parked up just at the top of town and we're gonna wander in. So this is Charlestown Harbour and you might recognise it because it's been in lots and lots of films uh, like Poldark and I think it was in Pirates of the Caribbean and other stuff but it was actually made for the clay industry. Um, they were transporting so much clay out but they actually blasted this whole dock out of the cliffs using dynamite. Here was built for the loading of clay onto the boats that were leaving these docks and the last ship to actually leave the port left in 1999 and this side, the east side of the village used to be called... We found our lunch but we're at Harbour Q in Charleston. Crispy onion, pickle, um, green salsa, all of it, yeah slow cooked meat, slow cooked meat, sorry vegans. Mm. Oh my god, guys. It looks so good. Wow, look at this. Look at that. We're just off to see my other sister, Zana, now and play some board games. I'd like to take a moment to thank this week's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who just loves learning or wants to inspire some creativity or perhaps learn a brand new skill. When you go onto Skillshare's website, you can browse the different categories of skills. And I was immediately drawn to the category Thrive. And I'm doing a course by Jonathan Van Ness called the Ultimate Self-Care Playbook. And I'm really enjoying it. I'm on lesson four, and I thought it'd be fun to bring you along with me as we make a self-care planner, as Jonathan suggests. So he comes up with these practical tips throughout the course to incorporate a little bit of self-love and well-being into your day-to-day -day life. Let's see how the planner goes. I've got a, a magazine, 
an old exercise book to make into my planner and some colouring pens. Now if you'd like to try Skillshare too then please use the link in the description or the code Lost in Transit. The first 1,000 people to click on that link or use the code will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Enjoy! La 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 bamba just arrived at Zena's house. We're gonna park up and go play some games, maybe go to the pub. We're back in the van, we're gonna get all cozy now and we'll catch you guys in the morning. Night night! morning everyone we had a nice warm sleep in the van all cozy it's really easy to stay and sleep in a bit because of these blackout blinds we've got we have just arrived into saint hostel which is actually the largest town in cornwall we are off to see zena at fluken the ceramics hub in saint hostel it's a, a workshop area that she set up where people can come and rent a space to work with clay <laughs> is a community ceramics hub. The surrounding area is the winning and working area of the China clay industry, so it's about 25 square miles. China clay from this area is like a really prized fine China clay and it's because of the granite, so geological processes, gas and heat and movement has like broken down this granite and that is what makes kaolin, which is also called China clay. Yeah. People start realising that if they dig up their back garden, they can get some money for it. Wow. And so like these little individual companies start popping up, but these start to grow and the holes get bigger and start joining together until you get these vast pits. Kind of the classic image of the China clay industry and, and the reason it got nicknamed the Cornish Alps is because of the really pointy tips. This moorland would have been littered with kind of um, ancient sites of interest. So you have barrows, you have khans, you have stone circles. There's also villages. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, entire, villages, entire yeah. villages that have just gone. Folklore and culture mm. and stories are quite often tied to these specific landscape markers. Um, and I think that through the loss of that, we have undoubtedly lost kind of folklore of this area. So I researched a lot of kind of stories um, and I also wanted to use kind of the materials of the landscape to tell the stories of the place. So mm. I'm literally using, you know, the, the ground from where the stories are attached to, to create the characters. So you make, is it called Buckawooden, the yeah. structures you make? So are they yeah. like the, the spirits of the clay country? Yeah, clay piskies. So it's still a working place. You can go to Wheel Martin and look mm. over into the working tip and kind of see it's still happening, but just on an ever-decreasing scale. What was an uh, industry that employed so many people in the local area and kind of was a defining industry of the local area now only employ employs like a couple of hundred people. Um, do you guys want to go on the wheel? It's full of clay. Okay. What you want to oh, do? Lovely. What you want to do is throw it with a little bit of force and okay. try and get it as central okay. as possible. Yeah, lovely. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to run a finger kind of round the bottom to try and seal the clay to the base. So you okay. kind of want to dig into the clay a little bit. Now you're going to wet your hands. Yeah. So you're just kind of pushing down. Stop, stop. Okay. Oh wow. <laughs> so we're going to bring it back in again. So put your hands round the side. Okay, with the wheel on. With the yeah. wheel on. I'm oh. in control. You're in control. <laughs> Show that clay you've got. So that is coning up, so now, right, now we're going to cone down just with this hand on the side. Yeah. And this hand is actually going to come to the top and Ooh. push down. So you're going to push it down with that hand yeah. and try and push inwards with that hand. You're going to try and keep your hands on the side and just let the kind of rotation of the wheel, let your thumbs find the middle point and they'll slowly start to get pulled down. So you'll start to kind of wear, just slowly wear a dip in the middle. And okay. then once you've found that central point, you can kind of press it. Then I can really play with it more. But yeah. first we're just sort of finding it, okay? Yeah. okay. So now you've got a nice wide bottom. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you've got a lovely wide bottom. <laughs> Ah, 
Three wobbly. Whoa. So, she should be pulling up a bit more, don't I? Whoa. <laughs> So we've made our little pots and um, I was gonna say thank you. Thank you, Zella. Oh, Thanks for having us. It's her day off and she's come in to uh, help us make pots and have a little chat with us. Right, guys, that's me off. We're at the station. I'm leaving. Tom and Gabs, they're off to Mavigazi. And I'll be back in about a week. So, bye, guys. <laughs> so, Isabel is away in London and I'm hanging out in Mavigazi with. My sister Gabs, who you've seen this whole time, but her boyfriend Paddy's come to join us as well. So yeah, so we're just hanging out in <laughs> Mavigazi. It's a drinking town with a fishing problem. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> the sea monster of Mavigazi! <laughs> <laughs>